What to do, YouTube? It's your boy, Dad, man. We whooping up another banger, man. Today, we are going to be reacting to 20 most disrespectful moments in NBA history. If y'all watch basketball, y'all going to like this. I done seen something. What was the most disrespectful thing in NBA history to y'all? I don't know. It had to be the Ryan or Tess going in the crowd. Boom, boom, boom. That's for me. But let's see what they say. Nastiest ankle breaker you've ever seen to Ooh. hooking up with a player's wife. These are the 20 most disrespectful moments in NBA history. Ooh. That made Jason that made Jason Terry retire, bro. After that happened, I, I didn't see Jason Terry no more. If I was their coach, I would I would never put him on me ever again. And at number 20, we got the most disrespectful dunk of Shaq's career. Here's Shaq. That's a big dude. Against Dudley Nice. The man hit him with the uh put the junk on him, then pull some off him. But what you gonna tell Shaq? Anybody. Is it, it ain't no dude bigger than Shaq. Tell, isn't, name a nigga that's taller than Shaq and bigger than Shaq at the same time. I'll wait. This nigga's taller than him, like Yah Ming and shit, but like beefy? Solid? Nah, that, that's one nigga I probably won't never fight. Him right there. For no money. <laughs> God damn! That looked personal. So did number 19. It was during the 2016 NBA Finals. Steph got humbled by LeBron. It's Bedlam here in Cleveland. <laughs> by James. Making a statement on both sides of the floor. <laughs> hey, bro, like, for real. It's LeBron. What was Kerry thinking? He put a hit with the... Hey, bro, only person they can do that slick is Rondo. Curry trying to hit with the... Like, come on, nigga. This is the GOAT, nigga. This is LeBron James. Nigga, you gonna pull a little basketball trick? Nigga, that's LeBron, nigga. LeBron is the NBA, nigga. LeBron Lee, who the next? That's gonna be top tier of the NBA. Come on, man. That's for the two time MVP. Get it out of here. What you talking now, about? Watch. Now, Curry caught it yes. best, but at number 18, Wesley Johnson got it even worse. Did you think it was certain to work? That's hard. Ooh. Right, man, hard. That's oh, hard, bro. Wesley Johnson, and then he hit the three. Come on. Bro, just imagine if he hit him with the cross, did the little shimmy with the ball, then shot it, bro. Hit the shimmy. Jesus, that man got cooked. But at number 17, Jalen Brown got burned. Because as a rookie, he got completely disrespected by Steph Curry. Give him a good, a good push. Ooh. Curry with the big on Jalen Brown drills it. Got the rookie up in the air. He did that. And Curry with a little something to say. Ooh, we did get Curry hit him with that. Hey, you were doing all that talk. Uh, we you ain't going nowhere. I got you locked. Curry hit him with the. Uh, he jumped. Look at Clay. Hey, look at Clay. They laughed at his ass. Afterwards, expressing himself to the rookie. Yeah, Steph had to teach the kid a lesson, but at least no one got hurt. Because of number 16, that someone tried to pop Russell Westbrook. Fans, come out and cheer, come out and boo, yell all you want. We encourage that. This is just plain stupidity. <laughs> Somebody pouring some popcorn, and he's probably feeling bad. His team may be en route here to losing this game, too. Just a stupid thing to do. Damn, they tried to. That is disrespectful, bro. Like, y'all really don't dislike people because they play for a different team. Oh, I don't like Rush Bruce. You never met Rush Bruce a day in your life. They say he trash and go about your business. Throwing popcorn, throwing water, or just at somebody at this. It just takes too much time, bro. 
that's just a different type of hate. All you want, we encourage that. This is just plain stupidity. Somebody pouring some popcorn, and he's probably feeling bad. Going His team off. may be en route here to losing this game too. Just a stupid thing to do. Damn, they tried to butter my man up. That's assault. And so was number 15, because Amari Stoudemire did something so disrespectful, that boy he was, ought to get locked up. That boy was hard. Now he just shoves Batty A out of the way, dunks over him, puts his hand down like he wants to help him up, and then takes it away. I mean, what is up with that? Yeah, he left that guy hanging. That's rude. But number 14 <laughs> was downright dirty because Patrick Ewing got bodied by Scotty. Hi, drop shippers. Oh. It's time to focus on what you do best. So go to Wix.com. Scotty Pippen. Myers for Pippen. Oh, a fight goal. He now. Stupid horse. Patrick Ewing, who did not appreciate it. And he hovered over Ewing for a second, and Patrick didn't like it as any player would like. God damn, this man Scotty's a demon. I mean, Scotty put his nuts over him, right? Jeez. But hey, so was Jimmy Butler, because of number 13, he tried to kill TJ Warren. And they were up 13 at the half. Here comes Butler, Warren spinning him around, and Butler, not happy with that, had to be restrained by Leroy Richardson. Jimmy, do not take yourself out of that New York weekend. Oh, don't, don't read lips, Heat Nation, do not read lips. Calm prevails, and the Heat go back to work ahead by 23. And Warren right back on Butler. Oh, Jim. Put a shoulder into the chest of Warren, and then Warren just got himself tossed out of the game for taunting. Oh, my. <laughs> What's going to happen? I don't know if you saw that on. Hey, that is the only thing Jimmy Buller did. Didn't Jimmy Buller hook up with somebody um, on the team? That boy, this. TV or not, but TJ Warren, that is a no no, my friend. Oh, these dudes are feisty. Look, Jimmy's got a hot head, Ooh. but his temper's not as bad as Draymond Green. Because this dude's... He should've been number one. I think it is. Hey, who y'all think number one? Nah, it ain't him. He got three more appearances in this um, show. Swears at fans, hits his opponents, and even punches his own teammates. But in number 12, he took the disrespect <laughs> to an unhealthy level. Because during the 2016 playoffs, he went after a man's family. Green putting a move on Adams, and he is fouled. And down goes Adams once again. As I mentioned earlier, playing with that bruised right thumb, took a couple of shots in game two. It's the lane, guys. Watch the lane. Oh. Jesus, you can't go after a man's kids like that. This man Draymond is... He has the heavy thing of Draymond went into the crowd or something. Jeez. Nuts. But if you think that's nuts, just imagine seeing moments like this in person. Well, with the sponsor of today's video, now you can. This is SeatGeek. They make it easy to buy tickets for concerts, festivals, NBA games, and more by oh, finding shit. every ticket available and ranking them. The green dots mean good deal, and the red dots mean bad deal. So download the app, use code REBOUND, get $20 off your next tickets. Now, you'll never have to miss out on moments like number 11, the time LeBron James disrespected a GOAT. Oh, you on twice. 27 points in the open Ooh. Frame. Here's a steal by LeBron. With the throwdown. He's not even looking at the I think he was, was looking, he looking at Michael at, Jordan. I was thinking the same thing. Michael Jordan's a little left of that Charlotte bench. I think that was a look at Michael like, turn out the lights, my friend. <laughs> Damn. LeBron just stared into Jordan's soul. He was. They think they were staring at the hoop. They were like, this your team you just bought? Niggas trash. <laughs> mm. Cool. But look, we're in the top 10. So from here on out, the disrespect is getting vicious. Oh, that's me, was it was it? 2013, and the Miami Heat were destroying the NBA, winning 22 games in a row. <laughs> with that kind of streak, you'd think they'd have everyone's respect. But no, the Heat got clowned by Jason Terry, who said, <laughs> I'm not impressed with their winning streak or anything they do. And got yeah, dumped on. Terry messed up, because later that night, this happened. Jason Terry, good defense. Wait for 
from behind takes it away. Covered. Come on. Come on. Whoa. Ain't no coming back from that. God damn. That felt illegal. But it started our ninth most disrespectful moment. The time Allen Iverson caught a body. See, in the 2001 NBA Finals, it was Lakers versus Sixers. And throughout game... This is the most iconic shit. I don't remember. I want the picture right here. I swear to God. If y'all watching, anybody watching, anybody that support me, that's what I want right here. The picture right here. I want the Allen Iverson over, over Lou the step over. I want the picture right here. I promise you, bro. I got it in my court right now, but I can't yeah, it's, it cost too much. If y'all can do that, that's all I want, bro. I want the Allen Iverson step over Lou and the little picture frame post. I swear that's all I want, bro. That's all I want. In one, AI was untouchable, dropping 48 points and hitting the most disrespectful crossover in NBA history. Iverson. By Nigga, you gonna step on him, bro? Come on. 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 Steps over to Rondo. Looks like he was dead in the water. The Sixers by four. 40 seconds left in overtime. Thank you. Man, that move was lethal. But at least it didn't ruin an entire team. Because of number eight, Damian Lillard destroyed an entire franchise with one shot. Shot clock is off. Portland has a timeout. Lillard, a chance to send the Thunder home. Lillard, long range three. It's good! The buzzer! Damian Lillard! Are you kidding He does that, bro. Yeah, he called the game and waved goodbye. This man Dame knows how to end things with a bang. And so does Tony Parker. Because in number Tony seven, he did something so disrespectful, it ended a marriage. See, back in the mid-2000s, Tony Parker and Brent Barry were great teammates. Together, they helped lead the Spurs to two NBA championships. And I off the court, know that, they were even better friends, attending each other's weddings, celebrating birthdays together, even their wives hung out. But in 2010, everything came crashing down when it was revealed that Tony Parker was sent- I know, Tony. Don't tell me he ain't true, Tony. <laughs> hey, Tony A wife was bad, bro. I don't know if they still engaged or anything. And Brent's wife, hundreds of flirty texts. Oh, and for real? it was clear that something or someone was going down. He, fr he, fr he, fr he from Paris, ain't he? That's what them niggas do. He French, ain't he? So shortly after, Brent divorced his wife and never talked to Tony again. Damn, Tony. How you gonna do your own teammate like that? Now that's savage. But not as savage as Charles Barkley in number six. See, Charles has thrown shade at tons of people. Shaq, LeBron, Westbrook. But there's one man who got it the worst. And it ain't even close. In my opinion, I always phrase that. I don't want to be one of these idiots on these other networks act like they know everything about all sports. Uh, Skip Bayless. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only thing I want to do is put my foot up Skip's ass. <laughs> okay. Damn. Let's see if Skip's up for that challenge. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. If I could get Skip Bayless in a room, and there we they are. need DNA to de define who it was when I got through with it. <laughs> like, if, if I get a disease and I'm going to die, how about I bring you get Skip Bayless in here and I kill him live on national television? Hey, well, damn. What's your beef with Skip? You done made me. There you go. There you go. Yes. Damn! This man Chuck is off his rocker. And Skip, well, he's just scared for his life. For about 15 years. I remember you saying, I won't forget the life jacket. Who talks like that? Charles Barkley has regularly and relentlessly said he would like to and I quote, kill me. Ah, again and please. again and again, Charles has said he would like to kill me. This 15 year onslaught has amazed me. It has amused me, but it has always confounded me because for the life of me, I have no idea why exactly Charles wants to kill me. Man, what do you do? Charles might be going too far. 
that poor old man is shook. But in number five, the entire NBA was shook. Because in the 90s, players were being disrespected by a monster. Seven foot two, Dikembe Mutombo. Yeah, this guy had the league by the balls. Because he was so massive, he was blocking everyone and hitting dudes with his signature Ooh. taunt, the finger wag. Welcome to the house of Mutombo. Hey, ain't his son in the NBA now? This is my house. Oh, and Dikembe said, no, not in my house. But in 1997, Dikembe fingered the wrong man. Because after years of blocking Michael Jordan, he had the nerve Ooh. to rub it in. Mike, come on, man. Dikembe. Be for real, you haven't got me yet. Huh? Mike, Dikembe. Dikembe. Don't even try it. You want me to go call Scotty? You have to call Scotty. Ball boy. What you call Scotty for? I haven't got you recently. Yeah, I agree with no, that. No, you haven't got me in the six years. One, two, three, just go ahead and say it. No. Never. He said, I'll get you one day. No. <laughs> he never dunked on you. He never put you on the highlight. No. No. This Damn. was just stupid. Cause hey, Michael, Michael Jordan is a betting man. They say that's one thing that man like to do is bet. A couple of months later, Dikembe went head to head with Jordan and got his ass humiliated. Michael MJ. Michael shakes the finger, but he finally got his dunk on Mount Matumbo. <laughs> he never dunked on you. He never put you on the highlight. No. No. He said, I would love to hear you in my poster, but it's not happening. It's not going to happen. Lying. You know he lying. Yeah, Jordan got his revenge. But sometimes, the disrespect goes even deeper than bro, basketball. Bro, Because what happened to number four? Bro, what happened to Durant? Hey, bro. I heard he got it. He just got it cut. But look, look, this was Durant, bro. He ain't start. He start having bad hair. When did Durant start having bad ass hair? Like, look at this. Was a French cut. That nigga on the thunder wheel. He, he ain't never had them naps in his hair. Ball spots and shit. He might as well just give it a ball here, bro. Westbrook officially became teammates, and over the next few years, they turned. This was the team. If anybody should have won finals back to back, it should have been this team, the Thunder. Westbrook? Harden? Durant? Uh, Savaski? Sof whatever. Them four? Who else was? Was it the big dude? Was Adams still on the Thunder with them too? Man, they had a team. That's all I used to play with on 2K. The Thunder. Man, it was my number one team, 2K13. Was it 2K16? 2K Turned into one of the greatest young duos they in was, NBA bro. history. It was tough. But 2016 messed everything up because in the Western Conference Finals, the Thunder choked, blowing a three-to-one lead to the Warriors <laughs> and getting eliminated. And if that wasn't bad enough, just a couple of months later, things got even uglier when KD ditched Russ to sign with the Warriors, <laughs> and that alone was already disrespectful. But the worst. Yeah, that wasn't no disrespectful, bro. I'm gonna look at it like this, bro. I'm on the team, and I'm tired of losing, bro. I'm not trying to be Charles Barkley. You know? I'm trying to have a ring, bro. That's why I hoop to get a ring, to win. And I'm not gonna keep losing on this team every year. You know, something ain't going on. Some it ain't hitting. Nigga, I'm gonna go to the team that went last time. Oh, he was a traitor. He loved her. Man, nigga, at the end of the day, you want to win. If I'm playing cook, kickball, soccer, it don't matter. If I'm on the team, I done lost three times, and these niggas done beat me four times. I want to get drafted by them niggas. <laughs> For real. This part was, Katie didn't even tell Russ. He found out on Twitter, like everyone else. Yeah. And after everything they had been through, this was the most disrespectful thing KD could have done. So on their first matchup back at OKC, all hell broke loose. This is the t-shirt they walked in with this morning. This is what's on the front, and this is what's on the back. That would be a cupcake. <laughs> he by but he couldn't hold on as these former star teammates jawing at each other, forehead to forehead. Are you okay to speak your terms? No. Nah. Man. Now, I can see why Westbrook was mad. I'd be mad too, nigga. We balling together. Nigga, you my go-to, bro. If I can't get the basket off, I know you can get the basket off. 
and you don't tell me you're going to another team, at least tell me you're going to another team. Like, hey, bro, bro, I'm tired of losing. I got to go up here with them, bro. All I can say is, bro, don't do it, bro. Give me one more year. We're going to go hard. We're going to tell the coach we can draft some people. Let's get some side players in. But he ain't even tell Westbrook. Like, he ain't even tell him. But, hey, at the end of the day, that ain't his business to tell him. But if y'all got that brotherhood, you post ahead, told him, though. I'm just saying, if I know, if I'm on a basketball team with anybody, I like, and he get buckets, and I get buckets, it's a brotherhood. Because I'm like, oh, if I can't get it off, I know he going to get it off. But at least tell somebody next time, bro. It's always a sad day when best friends turn to worst enemies. And with that, we've hit the top three. So the disrespect is about to get devious. And we got to start with Mr. Wardell himself. Stephen Curry. Steph See, in 2019, Steph not only lost in the NBA Finals, but he also got injured and Ooh, missed the entire next season. He did. So by 2020, people were saying that Steph had officially fallen off. The question is, how many titles in the next four years? So we go, we go, y'all go sit on first take. You and Dominique Foxworth are going to sit on first take and say that Steph. Bro, you got to think about it. Hey, nigga. Hey, ooh. I'm trying to picture. It was the Warriors when I think it was like it was a like first time ever going to the playoffs. That's when I think his name Jerry Jack. So Dorsey is a place Brownstone dude who had a ball head. Last name was Jack. When he was on the like when I said the Lakers when he was on the Warriors and it was that first playoff game. Them niggas was hard, bro. That's my first time ever seeing Curry. He was just shooting three, three, three. This wasn't 2018, Curry. This was like 2017. What's the first time he went to the playoffs, bro? Nigga was hard, bro. It was, I... Steph Curry will not be in uh, the conversation for a championship yeah. in the yeah. next four yeah. years. Yeah. Hater. And over the next couple of years, uh, the haters stayed dissing Steph, saying he was washed up and he would never, never win a ring that. again. But in the 2022 playoffs, Steph made everyone eat their words. Because this dude went on a rampage, having the most disrespectful what championship run in NBA history. Three to shoot. Curry. Left hand. He would not be stopped. Curry a three. He got it. Come on. How can you bet on a nigga that can shoot the ball anywhere? Or how can you not like a nigga who shoot the ball anywhere? Literally from the other side, it's going in. From the bleachers, it's going in. From the other side of the basketball hoop, it's going in. How can you bet on him to lose? Then he got Clay's back up. Now they got pool. Come on, man. Light stand, brothers. <laughs> Rise and fire! Curry catches it. Fakes. Fires three pointer. Bang! Steph Curry from downtown. A 15 point lead. They sleep on me. Yeah. Steph put everyone to sleep. Dissing his way to his fourth ring. But don't get it twisted. Disrespecting your opponent and is that's not crazy. supposed to yeah, end this well. Because what LeBron did in number two was so disrespectful cost him a championship. See, in 2011, the Heat were taking on the Mavs in the NBA I remember Finals. This. I was in Atlanta. Going this into happened. Game 5, the series was tied at 2 when Dirk Nowitzki got sick. The night before, I go home. Give me three seconds. I remember I'll this. make you 20% more. I was in a, this was my last time in Atlanta. I remember I was on my uncle house just came on. Miami and Mavericks. I started to call. I was like, oh, I'll probably just need to go to bed and uh, I'll be great tomorrow. But it just didn't happen that way. The trainer comes in and says, Dirk sick. Huh? Sick? What do you got? They were like, we got the flu. Oh, I said, oh, no, 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 no. Not right now. Not in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dirk caught the flu. Hey, bro, the flu is horrible. You don't feel yourself. Your energy, usually at 100, is at 39%. The flu is awful, bro in the middle of the finals. And that was already a lot for him to handle. But things were made even worse by LeBron and Dwayne Wade. Because right before the game, they pulled up to the Mavs arena and made fun of Dirk 
for being sick. Oh, did y'all hear me cough? I think I'm sick. Ah. <laughs> in the private bro now if it's a little my nose sniffing i got a cough cough yeah but if it's the flu bro you can't hoop and you got the flu weather man weather is crazy it's hard to go from 85 degree weather man go to 90. <laughs> this was a huge mistake because when dirk saw the clip he was pissed think of the video of uh wade and lebron coughing Dwayne said that uh, that was a real cough by the way well, I just thought it was a little childish, a little, little ignorant. You know, I've been in this league for, for 13 years. I never faked uh, an injury or, or an illness before. When LeBron and Wade uh, started making fun of him by cuffing when he got a little sick. And it's hard to dirt, go a dirt, because Dirk already so tall. Then his jump shot, ugly as hell. He leaned it all the way back here so you can't block it. Man, Dirk, some Dirk was that nigga. That clip r really hurt him that he will never say it but he really saw the tape uh, and that that tape really hurt him and that gave him a little bit extra that he didn't need but it gave him a little extra to, to finish him off yeah the series became personal and over the next two games dirk wanted to show everyone so he annihilated the heat winning his first ever nba championship and officially getting back at lebron man what a crazy way to end a beef but look Things are about to get a whole lot beefier, because for our number one Kobe. most disrespectful moment, we got to talk about Shaq and Kobe. Ooh. See, in the early 2000s, these dudes were unstoppable, Could dominating the league and winning three back to back, titles back to back. in a row. And on the surface, it seemed like everything was all love, but behind the scenes, things were ugly, because Shaq and Kobe were on completely different wavelengths. While Shaq was slamming burgers by day and dunking by night, Kobe was locked in the gym for days on end. And those differences. They said Kobe was perfectionist, bro. And that's the main reason. If Kobe think you slacking, he gonna let you know. That boy's a professionalist. Like he wanted to do better. Like he did better. Now niggas like, oh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Kobe wanted them niggas, he do it right now. Really pissed each other off. So they'd fight during practice, argue during games, and even trash talk each other to the media. But by 2003, the disrespect had gone too far. Because during training camp, Shaq told reporters that the Lakers were his team. And if Kobe didn't like it, he should leave. And Kobe was having... Nah. I don't know, because you can't lose in either one. Let's say this. If the Dynasty franchise had to choose between Kobe or Shaq. If you don't choose me, I'm leaving. Who you think they taking? Nigga, Kobe, nigga. Fuck you, man. <laughs> but at the same time, it's sack. It's prime sack. Boy, I don't, I don't even know. Who would y'all pick? If the franchise, they got to this beef. It was like, if you don't get rid of him, I'm leaving. Kobe, prime Kobe, prime sack. You can only keep one. Who you keeping? That's hard, bro. Because sack, who can go or sack in the prime? Nobody. Who can go at Kobe in the prime? Nobody. Bro, I wouldn't know what to do. To give him more money, shit. None of that. Money out so my the very pocket. next day, he sat down with ESPN and unleashed on Shaq. Calling him fat, lazy, out of shape, a bad leader. Even saying a guy selling donuts at 7-Eleven had more pride in his job than Shaq. Dang. And after that, whatever respect they still had for each other was gone. So later that season, after losing in the 2004 NBA Finals, Shaq and Kobe were through. It's certainly a disappointing day in a lot of ways in Los Angeles. I mean, to say anything else, you know, would not be telling the truth. Shaq's future is certain. A big shift in the balance of power in the NBA as the league's most dominant player is headed back east, the newest member of the Miami Heat. And that was tough. At this tough. point, it seemed like this beef would never get squashed. But in 2009, everything changed. Because after avoiding each other for five straight years, hey, Shaq and when Shaq left, that's when Gasol came in. That's when Kobe got his other ring. Jeez. Kobe didn't want to hold a grudge anymore. So during the NBA All-Star weekend, they teamed up 
one final time and put all the disrespect behind them. Kobe's the best player in the league, so A-plus on that side and you no know, A-plus for you know, being a great guy. And he even let me you know, take the trophy home today for my boy, so appreciate him for that. All right, cool, thank you, appreciate it. And from that day forward, Shaq and Kobe were officially besties again. <laughs> despite all the disrespect and everything that happened, not only will Kobe and Shaq be remembered as NBA legends, but they'll be remembered as brothers too. That's beautiful, man. It's crazy how talented these two are, on and off the court. Oh, yeah. Like Shaq, he's a fully trained police officer, and Kobe, he's an Oscar-winning producer. Yeah, these guys could do a lot. Look, if you want to hear more, you need to click on this video right here, because these are- mm, That was dope, man. That was a good video, so what we need to do is click that like button. Comment down below. Three subscribe to the family, man.